This is a K2 Storm Tracker weather alert. Another person has died from suspected heat related causes in Oregon, bringing the total to six statewide. Latest victim, a 67 year old woman in Multnomah County. And tonight, K2 News is on your side, tracking our record breaking heat as we hit triple digits today for the third day in a row. Good evening. Thanks a lot for joining us, everybody. I'm Steve Dunn. I'm Deborah Knapp. Temperatures will drop a bit tomorrow, but it'll still be much hot, hotter than usual for this time of the year. We have Storm Tracker 2 weather alert team coverage. We begin with meteorologist Dave Seleski in the forecast. Dave? Yeah, sure. The latest numbers we have out there now. These are not the high temperatures today, but the latest temperatures we have in. And look at some of these numbers. We're talking temperatures, records being broken to go back to the 1920s. A current number here in Portland, 103 degrees. That's a new record. Uh, breaks the old one set back in 1985 of 96 degrees. Up in Vancouver, you're 102, Salem at 105. Look at the Dow's. 108 degrees, 107 in Pendleton. This is kind of not the highs, just the current temperatures. There you have the coast, quite a bit cooler here. That's a sign of some cooler air getting onto the ocean beaches and will begin to filter in to parts of western Oregon overnight tonight. But that cooling process will be very slow this evening. 76, the current temperature in Astoria. A chilly 63, though, down in Newport. All right, live cameras for you. Here's a look up in the gorge. You can see fair skies here. 100, the current number in Hood River. Not much wind at this time, but that will be changing overnight tonight and for tomorrow on Wednesday. Some fairly breezy conditions tomorrow in the gorge. Touch mark up in the West Hills here sitting up at 102. Uh, sunshine, but a little bit of haze. You've been dealing with some moderate air quality over parts of the metropolitan area. Now, relief from the heat as our ridge of high pressure, this heat dome, begins to shift off towards the east. We'll start to see a stronger onshore flow ushering in somewhat cooler air overnight tonight and into tomorrow on Wednesday. So again, temperatures will be cooler, still well above average for this time of the year, though. We're talking highs in the 90s. Uh, breezy in the gorge tomorrow. Could see some peak wind gusts there approaching 25 to 35 miles an hour. Hence, we have a red flag warning going up for a good portion of central and eastern Oregon. That will be in effect for tonight, tomorrow, and perhaps much of the rest of the week as well. Have all the forecasts for you in about 10 minutes. Back to you guys. Dave, thank you. Our Storm Tracker 2 weather alert Team coverage continues with K2 Shelby Slaughter. And as we mentioned, Multnomah County announced another suspected heat death today. That brings the total number of deaths to six statewide. Right, Shelby? Exactly, Steve, and that's one of the reasons why the county is still keeping things like the mobile medical van open, and it's open until 6.30 tonight. We're calling all areas of town, especially those folks at increased risk of heat-related illness. Health officer Dr. Richard Bruno and his team aren't giving up. Outreach continued on Tuesday, especially to our most vulnerable. We're really trying to make sure that we're hyper-focusing our efforts on our seniors in our community, uh, our neighbors and friends and family members who are older and maybe have uh, less resources or maybe have uh, not, no, apartment, no AC in their apartment. Bruno continues to emphasize checking on your neighbors and family members and making sure they have cold water, especially if they don't want to leave their home. I think last night alone we had about 75 people after hours at Central Library. Chris Voss with Multnomah County Emergency Management says the county has increased their resources like this mobile medical van for people to walk up to and get treatment right then and there. We know we're seeing a lot of people that are taking advantage of these opportunities and really trying to stay cool. Voss tells me the county learned a lot from the 2021 heat dome and says they've given out more supplies to those in need to prove it. It's a whole lot higher. Um, I think the heat dome has really changed the way the county has done some of these responses. And I did reach out to Portland Fire and Rescue, and they tell me since the 4th of July, they've responded to 135 heat-related cases. For reporting live in Portland, I'm Shelby Slaughter, K2 News. Shelby, thank you. And if you live in Portland and don't have AC, you could be eligible for a free unit from the city. This is part of the Cooling Portland program. You can call 311 or go online to apply for one. Right now, the program is prioritizing the most vulnerable populations, including people over 60, those with medical conditions and those who live alone. You can find more information on our website, katu.com. And with temperatures hitting the triple digits again today, a lot of people are surely lowering the temperatures on their thermostats. But about one in five PGE customers are doing the opposite as part of an energy saving program. K2's Emily Gersh is live at the PGE warehouse in Beaverton. So Emily, PGE says they've activated a peak time event today. What does that mean? 
Yeah, Deb, well, for customers who opted in the smart thermostat program, this means PGE can turn up the thermostats in their home from three to eight today as a way to reduce stress on the grid. PGE is asking customers to relinquish some control for a greater impact to the community. You may think to yourself, well, two degrees increase in my home isn't going to make much of a difference. Well, it will because you're joined by tens of thousands of other folks who are doing the exact same thing. About 200,000 PGE customers are enrolled in the company's Smart Thermostat or Peak Times Rebate program. This gives PGE the power to turn up or down their thermostats by two or three degrees in extreme heat or cold to protect the grid from being overburdened. Spokesperson John Farmer says this is what led to the 6,000 heat-related outages over the 4th of July weekend. You know, Mother Nature threw what she had at us and a few of those components uh, couldn't stand up. Customers enrolled in the smart thermostat program can also override the temperature change, but at the cost of losing financial credits if they do it, more than half of the day's PGE determines as peak time events. Farmer says he realizes people are skeptical about the program. We even read him what some are saying about it. You have people saying things like, well, what about the electric cars that PGE is operating? Why don't they reduce charging those instead of sure. telling us to sit in our house is hotter? Yeah. What do you say to those folks? Well, number one, I would say we have a pilot program now to manage electric vehicle charging. So the electric vehicles will soon, in, and by soon, that's kind of one, two, three years from now as we're in the pilot program phase, they will become part of this flexible energy reduction. Now, Farmer says customer actions reduced energy by 90 megawatts during the three-day heat wave in August of last year. We have more energy-saving tips on our website, katu.com. We're live in Beaverton tonight. Emily Gersh, K2 News. Emily, thank you. The temperatures may be dropping tomorrow, but it'll still be much warmer than we're used to this time of year. Stay with K2 News for the most up-to-date forecast information and safety warnings. When we're not on the air, head to our website, katu.com, or our social media pages.